All right, how's it going? Good evening, everybody. People are starting to trickle in. We, or uh, I guess I should say I, I'm excited to uh, see everybody trickling in here tonight. You guys are stuck with me tonight. Super excited to uh, dive into the stream card. Got a bunch of new stuff, as I'm sure you've all uh, hopefully been poking around with and then starting to explore and hopefully you've brought us uh, some really great questions that we can cover at the end of the night as well. Uh, so we won't wait too long after seven o'clock uh, central time hits here to get things started, but we'll wait uh, for uh, everybody to kind of roll in here. Again, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Uh, we've uh, had a lot of fun seeing a lot of you out at the uh, fly fishing shows around the country as we've kicked off the year here in uh, Marlboro, the Virginia Fly and Wine Show. Uh, we were just in Denver a couple weeks ago and then just finished out the uh, kind of January run with uh, New Jersey this past weekend. So for those of you that we saw recently, uh, hello again. And for those of you who have been users for a long time, thank you so much for your continued support uh, support of the of trout routes and of the master class series we uh, love doing these every month and are looking forward to continuing to uh, bring them to you in 2024 uh, for fly shows coming up we will uh, we'll be in atlanta this weekend uh, then we've got one week off and then uh, the weekend after that we've got two shows we'll be in seattle at the fly fishing show and uh, at texas trout fest uh, we're super excited to be down there for that one as well so and just want to remind everyone uh, that if you haven't already, make sure you check out our former Masterclass series as well, uh, our, all the videos. You can uh, check them out on our YouTube channel. Just search Trout Routes on YouTube there, and you'll be able to find a playlist of all those uh, former videos. And we will uh, be posting this one as well. I've also got a deck that we'll be going through tonight. If anybody uh, would like that at the end of the night, shoot an email over to hello at troutroutes.com and uh, we'll get that sent over to you as well. So without any further ado, I will actually one more thing. I will just let you know because that I am the only one uh, leading things off here tonight. Uh, I will try to get to as many of those questions as they're uh, getting asked, but we might uh, just have to wait till the end of the evening to cover them all. Um, so, all right, let's get things started here. Like I said, we're going to jump into a quick deck here. So I will share my screen. Awesome. Perfect. All right, hopefully everybody can see that all right, and we will start things off. So, actually, able to, there we go. All right, starting things off, welcome again to Masterclass uh, Deep Dive Stream Card 2.0. So first, we're going to start off with what is the stream card? So we got a lot of emails after we've launched the new stream card here, kind of asking, what is the stream card? How have I, should I have been using it? How can I use it uh, moving forward? We're going to cover, cover that all here tonight, but let's start off with the basics. The uh, stream card, the Trout Route stream card is the half screen uh, pop-up. Uh, you trigger when clicking on any of the 50,000 streams across the map. Uh, I definitely recommend having your phone out with you tonight, kind of following along as we do some of the demos here uh, and jump into all of those new tabs as well. That might be a great way to hopefully come upon some of those questions and maybe get the most out of the, uh, the class tonight. So in StreamCard 1.0, as you can see on the left side of the comparison here, uh, users were shown the stream name. Uh, the location and classification, along with uh, special regulations and a few quick links as well. Uh, with the new stream card, stream card 2.0, we've introduced that new tab style stream card with uh, buckets of data, including geography, local inf information, fly shops, stream flows, access laws, and access to the My Content section where you can enter notes, or photos. Again, all of that is being saved to your personal profile, never being blasted anywhere or anything like that. Um, so that's just going to be a great way to allow users to access a lot more information in less time, which is, again, why we want to be using the app, right? Instead of having 10, 12 different tabs open when you're planning a trip, things like that. Uh, one of the nice things I'll, I'll cover quick, one of the ways that you can uh, make sure you're running the most up-to-date version of the app is to jump into the App Store, search Trout Routes as if you were downloading it for the first time. And if where that uh, usually would say uh, get for if you were just downloading it for the first time, um, or it should say either open if you've already got that most up-to-date version, or it'll say update if you do need to update to that most 
current version of the app. So that's just a great way to kind of uh, double check that you're using that most current version. So jumping into that new stream card and those specific tabs, the first one that we are gonna cover is going to be geography. So that geography tab is going to quickly allow access to basic geography statistics like waterway length, uh, peak elevation, um, elevation change and slope along with our interactive uh, elevation and new slope charts for every river across the entire country. Uh, so one of those real world applications, we'll cover this for uh, each new tab that we've got tonight, is uh, say you're planning a trip out west and want to target higher altitude uh, cutthroat in streams with a slope that will not only hold fish, but it's also going to be traversable as well. So I'm going to switch over to my phone here and we will uh, kind of jump into that and I will showcase that off a little bit beyond just the screenshot. Awesome. So hopefully everybody can see that screen now. So if we click into that uh, a stream there, again, that's going to bring up that stream card. Uh, looking at that first geography tab, uh, first I'll actually cover the, the that top section of the stream card there. If you see, I'll click across these tabs. That top section that's going to stay con uh, consistent is going to be the name of the creek, uh, the section of that stream, river, creek, whatever it might be, uh, and then the county and state. Uh, it'll also, this is going to be new, give you the uh, distance away, uh, the feet and elevation that it sits at and then we've got that uh, off to the far right hand side there that rating um, so that's going to give you that rating now and if you click into it this is going to be a new bug that we've uh, got to send out tonight a new bug update uh, currently if you click into that it takes pro users to the upgrade screen this is what it should take you to uh, again we're going to be hopefully pushing this update out tonight um, but that'll just bring you to a nice kind of uh, explanation of those classes. So we'll click back out of there. And the other consistent buttons that you're going to have are going to be that share button. If you want to send this to a friend who has trout routes, uh, the bookmark button. So that's going to save that stream to your favorite streams. And then offline, if you want to save that uh, stream river or creek specifically offline. Um, so Moving down into the geography tab specifically, as you can see, if we uh, kind of slide up a little bit, that's gonna bring up that slider to jump into that elevation or slope chart there, which is really awesome. Uh, so moving back, you can see we can then kind of click and scrub along again and find those really kind of nice plunge pools or where that uh, hike might get a little bit more strenuous, right? Things like that. Um, and as well as we've got a, across the top there, that length, uh, the peak elevation of the stream, the elevation change, and then that slope. So that's going to be nice again if we're looking at uh, a certain stream there, that 3.5 slope, probably going to be uh, overall pretty pretty easy if we uh, click off and click into one of these more uh, high altitude kind of higher gradient streams you can see that slope is going to be at 13.2 degrees there so you know that's going to be a little bit more strenuous of, uh, of a time getting to that water and getting up that water right so that's just a nice easy way to kind of use that geography tab to uh, get a lot of quick information on the stream itself and then being able to get quick access to that elevation and slope chart as well. All right, jumping back to the deck here. The second one that we're going to cover is going to be the local information tab. So this tab is going to uh, help you find general season guidance. It's going to help you learn about special river characteristics. Uh, as you can see in the screenshot there, we've got uh, if it's it'll be highlighted if it's populator, popular, uh, if it's a tailwater or if it uh, contains land easements, which is really nice if you're looking for water that might not get uh, used as often or things like that, just making sure that you know about some of those local and uh, county level easements as well. Um, and that's gonna be for any stream again across the entire country. So real world application of that is gonna be, uh, say you're looking at across state lines for a place to fish during the winter and wanna be able to quickly see if it's a tailwater or what if any spe special regulations uh, might be in place on that waterway. So we'll jump back to the app again here. Let's see here, there we go. And if we click back out, 
we can find another piece here and we'll go to local information on the blue here and you can see again if we swipe up that'll bring up a little bit more information on that local information general season guidance again colorado waters are open for trout fishing year round unless otherwise noted so that's going to be a nice really quick easy uh, kind of guidance there and then moving up on that uh, tab itself, you can see that's where those river characteristics are gonna be. All of these are currently highlighted. You can see they're uh, kind of that dark gray there. If those A aren't popular or are not a tailwater, we do not have land easements on them. They will not have that dark gray. They'll kind of have a, a white background to them. So that'll be the kind of way that you'll be able to tell if they're popular, have a tailwater or have easements, which the blue has all three here. Uh, moving up even further, that's where you can find those special regulations and classifications that uh, you are kind of used to seeing in the stream card there. Um, within that, you can see, again, we're going to have those gear regulations, any special regulations, and that's going to be broken down by waterway specifically. So I'll jump back into the deck here and then try to cover a few of these questions I've seen come in here. Awesome. Uh, Andy, does the local information tab summarize access and easement? Uh, feet wet or easement access is important to note. So Andy, that's uh, great. Uh, that's going to be actually in our new access laws tab that we'll cover here uh, just in just a minute. So hang tight. I, we have a, a whole tab dedicated to that one. That's going to be really great for when you're traveling across the country and things like that. Uh, James says, is it possible to find the GPS location of a particular stream. Uh, he is a stream monitor using the WISE2 H2O app and uh, save our stream protocols for chemical and bio testing of streams. And the GPS is helpful when recording data. Yeah, James. So let me actually jump back into the uh, stream card here. So the, the easiest way to find, you can either find the specific pinpoint of a section on a stream or if you go to share, that'll be where you'll be able to uh, send the direct um, geo coordinates to someone or be able to pull them that way. So that'll be the easiest way to do that. So that'll be through that share button that you'll be able to do any of that. So that'll be the easiest way to grab those geo uh, coordinates, as well as if you drop a, uh, a special certain marker, a, a custom marker, you can actually pull the if we click into this marker here, you can see we actually could share that marker then and send the exact locations that way. So that's a, another way of doing it if you want to send just one uh, specific location instead of the entire river. All right, jumping back here. The next tab that we're going to cover is going to be fly shops. So uh, our new fly shops tab is going to help populate a list of uh, every nearby fly shop within roughly 50 miles of the selected waterway. So you can get directions to the local fly shop either before you hit the water or after you run out of tippet while on the water. So again, those are going to be kind of our real world applications. So you're planning a trip to a new area. You want to find a fly shop close to that river that's going to have some of the best local intel, right? Be able to kind of help you maybe some sections to hit, uh, some flies to try, things like that. Um, so that's kind of a great way to use it. And then the second scenario is if you're actually out on the water itself and realize that you forgot uh, all of your tippet at home, whatever it might be, you can uh, find the closest fly shop to you that way as well. So that's another really great quick tool to uh, find that local fly shop. As we all know, they have the best intel and hopefully the best deal on flies, right? So we'll jump into the phone version again and check that out. Let me pull up a stream here. So we're sticking to Colorado tonight. It seems to be the easiest. We can jump into certain states during the questions for sure. But moving over to that fly shops tab, that's going to, again, be that third tab moving over. As you, as you can see, as we scroll along, that's going to show you all of those fly shops within roughly 50 miles, which obviously is a lot when you're out in Colorado. So it's going to be really nice to, again, be able to find the local fly shop, local intel, get some flies, get some tippet, whatever you might need while you're out on the water or as you're headed to the water itself. Perfect. Moving right along here. The next one we're going to cover is probably my personal favorite. 
and that is going to be the new stream flows tab. So instead of clicking on each and every one of those stream uh, gauge icons to get the specific uh, flows at each station, you can now click onto each riverway and pull up all of those gauges along that entire waterway to be able to kind of tell whether you uh, want to have a, a fish a certain section or not. And then the other nice feature that comes with this tab as well is if that uh, river doesn't have an icon, uh, gauge on it, you can now uh, see any other uh, icon gauges within that watershed. So that's a really nice way to not only learn about the watershed, kind of learn what rivers and streams are draining into some of the bigger waterways, but also be able to, if you are fishing some of those smaller waterways, kind of extrapolate off of some of those bigger waterways gauges. So that's just a nice way to, as we're entering that runoff season here in the next couple of months, start tracking that really quickly and easily. So I will again, Try to share my phone screen, jumping back and forth tonight. We'll have to pull that up here again. So again, that stream flows going to be that fourth tab over. And obviously when things aren't iced up, we can again, try to jump back to something that's not going to be iced up. You can see when the waterway isn't iced up, it's going to pull in those flows, those heights, and those temps if the if that gauge does have it. About half of the gauges across the country at this point are pulling for temperature. Um, so you can see there's one that has temp, which is pretty nice. So going to be a really nice way to, again, quickly and easily decipher what sections of water you might want to start on or things like that. All right, no questions, we'll continue on here. The next one is going to be access laws. So jumping into uh, that earlier question, uh, we actually now have an entire tab dedicated to uh, the access laws. So this is going to help you when you are not only uh, trying to check out some new water in your backyard, but if you're traveling again across state lines or things like that, it'll help you kind of decipher some of those uh, confusing waterway access laws that we know, you know, certain uh, states have different stream bed laws, right? So this is gonna be a really quick, easy way to try to help you decipher that. So it's going to give you a summary, and then we'll jump into the uh, phone version here, and you'll be able to see that it also is going to give you a breakdown of the walk and wade and those floating laws. Um, and so we want to, I, I want to shout out uh, backcountry hunters and anglers. Specifically, uh, we were able to source all of that information for this new tab from them. Uh, so really appreciate them being able to be that uh, concise uh, source for all of that information. Um, so again, real world application, like I mentioned, you're planning a trip to a state you've never fished before and want to make sure that you're staying safe uh, and while you're out on that walk and wade trip exploring some new water. So we'll jump back to the phone here. And I'll go to a little bit different of a state here. Let's jump to... Let's jump to New Jersey. I don't know if everybody saw, but recently there was a, uh, a video that went a little bit viral. I'm not sure exactly what river it was on, uh, but I believe it was based out of the video was out of New Jersey. Um, so if we just kind of, uh, um, again, just swipe up slightly on that car, just kind of just it looks like uh, Michelle actually here just mentioned can't easily find the swipe up feature. So Michelle, that's just going to be if you just kind of grab where that little gray bar is and just pull up on your screen, that should bring that up a little bit and give you a better view of that. But as I was mentioning, it seemed like there was a, uh, I, I believe it was based out of New Jersey, that uh, viral video where uh, a, a young man got into some trouble with uh, a private landowner about getting into a waterway um, and, and stream bed access laws. So one thing that he could have done or that that uh, even the um, police could have done that didn't seem to uh, know some of those those uh, access laws would have been able to 
pull up the app and pull up this new access laws tab. And so that's going to give you a summary for New Jersey. As you can see, uh, it'll give you that New Jersey tidal waters are open to public use regardless of navigability. And then it'll break down those uh, walk and wade uh, and floating laws and then give you some more information to the state website. And again, that source of information there for the backcountry hunters and anglers website. Um, so going to be a really nice tab, as I said, for when you're exploring new water in a new state, or if you want to just make sure that uh, the thing that you've been doing in the waterways that you've been exploring, you've been doing so uh, by the law, so to speak, right? So we'll jump back to the deck here and cover that question I saw came in. Let's see. David said, on the Streamflows tab, what does the height window indicate? Uh, so David, the, the height is going to be the, the depth of water uh, at that gauge site. So that'll be, uh, sometimes it'll be at a plunge pool or sometimes they'll be in uh, a riffle and that'll just determine what the, the uh, uh, depth of the water is at that gauge. So that's going to be what that height stands for. All right, so the next uh, tab that we will cover is going to be the final tab, and then we'll jump into questions. Uh, hopefully people have some questions either about the new stream card itself or about the app in general. would love to dive into those as well. Um, and that is going to be the My Content tab. Uh, so this is going to be one that, uh, again, has been accessible in the stream card uh, all along, but is now just going to have its own tab dedicated to it. Um, so instead of having to swipe all the way up to the bottom of the stream card, you'll be able to uh, go to this specific tab and have a place for any notes that you add into a stream or uh, any photos. Um, you know, sometimes I like to, uh, as a photographer, add a photo uh, and to be able to remember the day by. But those notes are always nice. Um, I will say those notes aren't necessarily for that stream. I'm not going to share all my secrets with you. So, but we will jump back over into the phone for that last one here and cover that my content section. So I'll share here. We'll stay in New Jersey on this same stream and show you in that My Content section here, you'll be able to have those notes and those photos. And to add those notes, you'll simply click on that blue circle on the right-hand side of the stream, or right-hand side of the screen, I should say, and click into that note, be able to type anything you want. Great water. Who knows, right? We'll uh, save that. Hopefully uh, I make it there someday. And then you can add any photos from either uh, your camera if you're on the water and want to add a, a photo right there and then, or pull it from your gallery at a later time if you're going back in at the end of the day, uh, kind of using it as a fishing log that way. Awesome. And I will jump back into the deck here and jump into some of these questions. As I mentioned, that is going to finish out the kind of brand new tabs uh, overall. Um, and but as I can, as I said, we've got a few questions pouring in here. So let's jump into those. Andy said he likes the new format. Andy, we really appreciate it. We are super excited about this. Uh, we're hoping to bring it to the web and Android uh, around May. So we're, we're super excited to have it hopefully across all platforms soon. We've got one full-time developer right now that we are uh, we're, we're, uh, putting him to work. Uh, so we, uh, we're, we're uh, trying to make the most of our time and get it out as soon as possible. But we're really excited to get it out on iOS here. Uh, Gary, let's uh, keep moving on. Gary said, I'm wondering if the previous questions regarding swipe up was in regards how to get the card to swipe up. Uh, you need to touch on the river of interest and then the card will swipe up. Yes, uh, Gary, great, great um, point there. So that is going to be, uh, again, that's going to be kind of mentioning that when you pull that stream card up, which is going to be, again, that uh, half kind of pop up that we've been covering, you'll simply click on any of those waterways across the entire country, and that will bring that uh, stream card up um, to that kind of quarter to, to maybe a third uh, screen. And then if you just simply kind of pull and swipe up on the, the gray bar there, that'll bring it open even more. Uh, Steve, I noticed you showed a slope view of a stream earlier. Uh, can you show us how to do that again? Absolutely. So I will share my screen quickly again here. Let's see. All right. So if we will click off of the stream here, again, to pull up that stream card, tap on any of those waterways. For this, I tapped on that specific river there. 
that'll pull up the stream card to again about that kind of maybe a third of a screen view. If we just slightly pull up on that gray bar to expand that stream card, that'll give us the option to select that either elevation or if we click on that um, right below elevation change and slope there, you can see there's that little slider. We can click on that slider and that will slide it over to the slope or the elevation chart. So hopefully that answers uh, your question there. Steve, we appreciate you uh, sending that one in. Great one to clarify. That's gonna be a brand new feature again. That slope chart is not something that we've had within the app before. Uh, so I'm personally really excited to start using it and figure out the best way to use it uh, for myself. So continuing on with the questions here, we've got a lot pouring in. I'm super excited about it. Are there any uh, tailwaters in New Jersey or Pennsylvania? I can't seem to get that filter to work. Let's see. Let me let me check here before I share my screen, and uh, then we'll jump into it. How's that sound like? Filters, tailwater zone. So it doesn't look like you know it does. It looks like it does appear that there is a couple, maybe one or so in Pennsylvania. I'll share my screen really quick here. And just cover it because sometimes if you are quite zoomed out on the app itself, you might not see them. So just to kind of cover what Mike is mentioning here with that tailwaters filter, if you go into that filters tab down on the bottom of the screen there, we've got those uh, quick buttons to bring up filters and you can click that tailwaters only. Again, that's going to be a great feature to use during the winter, right? Uh, be able to find those tailwaters where you're going to have that consistent flow of water, uh, be able to, to quickly and easily hopefully find where you might want to fish. Uh, if we zoom out though, um, you can see we might not necessarily, if we're quite far zoomed out, be able to see all of those waterways. As we zoom in though, see there's not much in New Jersey in terms of tailwaters, but it does look like here in northern Pennsylvania. There are some in northeast Pennsylvania, and then it does look like there is one up in northwest Pennsylvania as well. So that's going to be just kind of a, make sure that you're zooming in far enough on the screen, uh, and that'll be a great way to make sure that you're not missing out on any of those streams. Awesome. Jumping back, jumping into the next question here. Uh, Clayton, uh, can you export notes? So right now we don't have the ability to uh, necessarily export your notes. Uh, if you are uh, using a, a, a competitive app, I should say some, something similar to Onyx, or if you're using Google and uh, saving all of your spots, you can export those spots, but it won't bring over any of those notes, uh, export and import those spots, but it won't bring over any of those notes when you import them uh, within the app. Uh, awesome. Next one from David. How do you add additional spots that have been marked already for those uh, hidden honey holes? Yeah, let's jump into that one. That's going to be a great feature that you want to make sure you're getting the most out of. Because again, that uh, custom profile that you've made when you set up the app is going to be your uh, essentially your personal phishing log. We're not using any crowdsource data, right? So anything that you enter within the app is always and forever going to be your personal saved spots. So I will share my screen again here. And if we're looking again down across those, that toolbar down on the bottom here, you can see that one in the middle that says create. We'll click on create and we'll go to new marker and we'll choose where we want that marker dropped. And we can click again down in the bottom right hand corner, create, and that'll bring up the ability to name it give it a marker uh, type so you can select any of those icons. And then again, you can add photos or notes to the specific markers instead of adding them to that uh, waterway within there. So awesome, great question, David. Zoom out, we'll keep the, uh, the app open here. David uh, says, new to the app and loves what he's seeing. Can't wait to start using it and learning 
the area he's in now recently located. That's a great, uh, great use case for it, David. Uh, you know, I personally moved uh, to Minnesota here where we're based uh, and hadn't fished a, a whole lot of the Driftless region and uh, was able to put the app to use myself and not only rely on my my uh, coworkers, but put the app to use to explore some new water that around the Driftless that they hadn't either. So that's a, a great, great use case and uh, glad to hear that you're enjoying the app so far. Uh, awesome. Next one is going to be David uh, says one day, hopefully it's possible to print out my content. Uh, that's a great, a great uh, thought, David. I'm definitely going to make note of that. And, uh, I, you know, I'm sure our software developer is watching. Um, and if not, I'm sure he'll, he'll watch the recorded version. So uh, we'll definitely make note of that and I'll pass that along to our development team. Uh, Greg, so that's going to, again, kind of cover that if you can print out the notes on your content. At this point, uh, there's no way to print out those notes after you've entered them into the app, uh, but definitely something that we'll pass along to the software team. Awesome. Next question is going to be from Lawrence here. Can you explain how to send a section of the river out? Yeah, absolutely. So if we click again into select a uh, again a section here if we go to that uh that share button so if we click that river it's going to pull up that stream card again right and you can see in that area across the top of the stream card that's going to stay uh consistent the entire time you'll have that share bookmark and offline buttons that share button is going to be uh, the button that you'll be able to click to send it to a friend uh to to uh share it wherever you might want to want to send it. You know, uh, I don't necessarily know uh, where you'd want to be blasting your favorite streams, right? But if you want to send it to a friend, that'll be the uh, the easiest way to do it there. So you'll be able to uh, click into the specific waterway that you want and uh, send out that section. Or you can always, again, create that custom marker and send out a specific location that way. It's a great way to do it as well. out. Awesome. Uh, Peter, I would love to be able to share notes with my fishing buddies. Any way for us to share notes? Uh, again, at this point, we don't have the ability to share those notes back and forth, um, but a great uh, thought and something I will pass along to the software team. Appreciate all these uh, ideas. You know, we, we uh, try to put as many awesome features and tools into the app that we like using. And it's great to hear from people who have been using the app in different ways in different areas of the country and things like that. Next question from Frank, is it possible to show the uh, mean height CFS on the stream flows? Uh, I was also impressed at the advances that we've made in the app. Glad to hear it. He's been a user since uh, close to inception. We really appreciate that uh, support there, Frank. Um, we we uh, will keep bringing some awesome updates. We've got some really exciting stuff planned for 2024 here. Um, but in terms of, is it, uh, at this point, we haven't brought in that mean height or, uh, flow in terms of the stream flows. Uh, we, we do have, if you click into those flows themselves, we can view those graphs and within there, you can find those by month, by day, by week. And that'll be the easiest way that you can kind of see over that period of time. Um, but at this point, we don't have any historical means or things like that to kind of see where it would uh, historically uh, be sitting at. Another thing that we've been looking to uh, bring into the app and just trying to figure out the best way to do it. So definitely something that's already on our software team's mind. Awesome. Uh, Andy, sorry to ask, don't ever be sorry to ask. This is this is what the master classes are for, right? We're hanging out, asking questions, getting to know the app better. It's what it's all about. Uh, does the local information include catch and release information and special stream regulations such as artificial only? Uh, asking for a bobber watcher friend. So, you know, Andy, one of the uh, really easy ways that you can do that is going to be jumping into that local information tab. And if there are special regulations and classifications, you'll be able to swipe all the way down into those and see those. Um, if some of those special regulations are embedded within certain state uh, databases, it might not be pulled in. So at that point, you would need to jump over to a state-based uh, database and kind of check some of those regulations. The other way that I'll make sure to mention, we've been kind of checking out the guide mode all night, um, but you can always use that regulations layer to see some of those special regulations. If we jump into that legend, you can see 
Trout Stream, Wild Premier, Wild Quality, Pennsylvania regulations with those Class A Wild Streams, Delayed Harvest, uh, other general special special regulations. So that'll be a great way to uh, check any of those regulations as well. Click back into that guide mode style. Personally, my favorite to use. Uh, Robert said that he would uh, be looking for a back button. If you click something on the stream uh, blue circle, for instance, you can not get back to the stream card view. Let's take a look here. So the easiest way to get back to that stream card view, Robert, as long as I'm understanding uh, the, the issue that you're experiencing correctly, is going to be to click back onto that waterway specifically, and that should bring that stream card back up. Um, if that's not the exact issue that you're uh, experiencing, I would love to uh, potentially take this question offline with you. Uh, you can always reach out to me at uh, hello at troutroutes.com, and we can try to get that uh, solved offline if that's uh, not helping you fix that issue that way. Uh, Diogo, awesome. What's happening? Uh, love the tailwaters only feature. Any plans on filtering the waterways by type, such as spring, uh, free, spring fed, freestone, things like that. Um, love the quality of the update. Uh, made TR even better. Again, we appreciate y'all's support. Uh, we're really excited, as I said, about this new stream card. Um, within uh, kind of labeling those waterways as spring fed, freestone, things like that. Uh, we don't have any plans to bring that into the app now. Again, that information is uh, tends to be a little bit harder to find databases with that information in it, um, but it's something that our GIS uh, specialist has definitely looked into and will continue to look into and try to find the best databases to be able to bring that to the app if possible. Um, Rick, awesome, uh, asked, how do you save a stream to a favorites list? So Rick, you can see here again in that uh, area that's going to say uh, constant across the top of the stream card there, we've got in the middle that bookmark uh, button. You can see as I click, you can't see my finger necessarily clicking, but as I click onto that bookmark uh, tab button there, you'll see it's highlighting blue or not. And that's going to uh, show you if that is one of your favorite streams. And again, the easiest way to access is gonna be in that My Content tab across the bottom and just jump into those favorite streams there. So that'll be how you'll access those once that you bookmark or favorite them. So again, that bookmark button, if that's uh, dark blue, that trout route's blue, that's gonna designate that that's favorited or bookmarked. And if it is not highlighted, that'll let you know that you don't have it saved yet. Tim, awesome. Yeah, point of information. Pennsylvania has many spring creeks that maintain a warmer temperature. Uh, you know, we uh, thankfully here in the, the Driftless area have a lot of spring fed streams as well that we can fish year round. Aren't we lucky, right? Awesome. Uh, from an anonymous attendee, we've got Waze Mapping allows real-time traffic reporting. Uh, will this app do that for fishing? You know, at this point, we uh, don't have the ability to uh, bring you real time uh, reports on the river. Um, we're not tracking people that closely to be able to uh, kind of do that. And we don't have any ability for users to enter that information at this time. Um, you know, one way that we we kind of recommend people using the app is if you are planning out a trip, save five, four or five spots along a river, right? If you show up to the first spot and there's five, six other cars, you're planning to uh, kind of have a day alone, you can just pull up uh, pull open the app that way, kind of use those other spots that you've already saved, not have your day ruined necessarily, right? Uh, all right, Robert asks, how do you share updated stream information with Trout Routes, i.e. access, parking, things like that? Um, so again, Robert, we, uh, we don't currently have a, a, a streamlined system within the app to uh, let us know about things that might need to be updated or certain local changes. Uh, so the easiest way is going to be either to send a support, uh, an email to support at troutroutes.com or hello at troutroutes.com. Um, one of us on the team will be on the end of that email and we'll be able to pass it to the, uh, the right team member to make sure that those uh, updates get implemented into the app uh, once we've 
kind of cross reference with some certain databases and things like that. So that uh, we really appreciate. Again, we're not relying on that crowdsource data, but we do really appreciate our dedicated users making sure that they help us out keeping things updated on some of those local levels, considering, you know, we'd like to say we've had our feet in all 50,000 streams around the country, but maybe one day, maybe one day. Uh, all right, Clayton. Uh, can you make notes online and see the info in the iOS app? Yes. So again, within that profile that you've created uh, that, that's attached to that email address and your password, that's going to be your profile that as long as you're logged into that profile on the web version, uh, and you're, if you're using that desktop version, anything that you've uh, done within that, any custom markers, any notes that you've made to streams, you'll be able to see those within your custom profile on the on your app, on your phone, on your tablet, wherever you might be using the app, you'll be able to see all of those custom markers that are tied directly to that account, not to the device, to that account. Awesome, James, uh, you can take a picture of the notes and print it. Uh, what about pictures? Can that be shared yet? Uh, great, great point, James. Uh, definitely a nice way if you could, could always screenshot that uh, section of the screen and print that uh, out that way. Uh, and in terms of pics, um, can't necessarily be shared if they're tied to the stream. Um, so just an easy way, take the photo outside of the, the app and then uh, you can always load those photos again into the app afterwards. Awesome. And an honest attendee, another uh, request for sharing notes. You know, we will work on that again. We, we recommend, we uh, love having people share stories and things like that about sharing uh, rivers or whatever it might be. And so uh, we'll definitely look into hopefully bringing a feature that'll allow you to share those notes uh, with your, your closest friends that way too, right? Uh, Diogo, the flow rate used to be uh, color-coded green, orange, and red according to the normal flow. Uh, did this change? Um, no, so that's going to, again, that's going to pull in. If we go into those streams, if we pull into the uh, the gauge specifically, you'll be able to see that'll still give you those color-coded uh, um, kind of general uh, uh, kind of, if it's green again, it's going to be usually those lower flows, uh, orange getting into the, the kind of higher flows area. And then if it's red, it's going to usually be blown out. Um, so that's going to be taking into account historical data, but we don't have the ability to, uh, access those charts within the app yet, but that is a great way again, to kind of, uh, find out if compared to normal, if those are good to go, getting uh, a little bit crazy or their chocolate milk, right? Great point there, Diogo. Awesome. Andy, uh, my five-year-old daughter is watching the video. Uh, fantastic. Got to start them young. Absolutely. She's asking if you can find photos of the fish she wants to catch. Um, searching by photo tags. So at this point, we don't, uh, within that My Content section, we don't have the ability to search for certain things. That is uh, something that within 2024 here, we're hoping to revamp. You know, now we've brought that new stream card. One of those next things that we're hoping to jump into is going to be that My Content section, just being able to better organize, better access, and better search for those things after you've saved them after you've added notes or after you've added photos so great point and uh super glad to hear that uh your daughter's watching how's it going addy thanks for uh joining and hanging out with us tonight um all right greg why do you uh have to toggle highlighted streams versus warm water uh slash all streams uh why not keep the known trout streams highlighted as blue green or gold um i guess Greg, I'm not necessarily positive as to what you uh, are, maybe uh, if you could clarify that question a little bit. Again, within the app, we are showing you uh, inland moving trout waters. So any of the water within the app is going to be uh, trout water. So that'll that'll be, a, again, just kind of a, a clarification there. Any water within the app is going to be a designated trout stream. Um, awesome, Frank. Um, when I was at the Edison Fly Show, uh, the street view was shown to me. Uh, how do you access that? Great question, Greg. So if we click into a waterway itself, see here, 
those orange dots, that's going to designate a bridge that has street view. So if we click into that bridge, we can then click into that street view, that big orange button, and that will take us to Google, or if we have uh, Google Maps downloaded on our phone, um, it'll take you there, and you can quickly and easily get a nice view of the water. If there's any parking at that bridge, things like that, doesn't look like there would be a very good parking here. So jump back into the app, and that's kind of going to be that, uh, again, to pull up those uh, bridges, you click onto the waterway, and that will bring up those bridges, and any of those bridges that are orange is going to be the way that you'll be able to see that. Awesome. Uh, Robert, is it conceivable to add recommended flash for a stream, or is that data not available? Uh, great question, Robert. You know, at this point, um, we've been looking for certain ways to kind of build some of that information into the app. Um, there's a couple really cool companies that are kind of coming around over the last couple of years that have started to bring some really great information and great databases for things like that. So it's definitely something that we've continued to look at and we'll continue to look at um, potentially bringing to the app. So great idea. Really appreciate that. Um, Andy, the bridge that you clicked on said that it was private. What does that mean? There's a bridge that he wants to fish that has the same language. Um, so Andy, that's just going to designate that that bridge is uh, going over or through private water. Um, so if that will that will just designate if certain stream bed laws don't allow access at bridges, um, that'll just let you know that that's going to be a private bridge that you wouldn't be able to access from. Uh, awesome. Mike, uh, when uh, or will the desktop version have the new features uh, and do you need to update something? Uh, no, Mike, you won't need to update anything uh, for these new features to be brought to the desktop. We haven't done that yet. That again, I did mention it earlier. Uh, we appreciate you for joining us tonight that we are hoping to bring to the web and Android in uh, around in or around May. So that is the, the current plan there. Awesome. And then Bill, looks like we've got the last one here. Please don't hesitate to ask any final ones that we can cover. Uh, you plan to have a presence at the Midwest Fly Fishing Show in Southeast Michigan in March. And yes, Bill, that is one that we are super excited to uh, to uh, attend. As I said earlier, uh, our February shows, we've only got a couple. Uh, we're rolling into uh, Atlanta this weekend and then Texas and Seattle later in the month. And then in March, we will have the uh, the Midwest Fly Fishing Show in Michigan, as well as our uh, quote unquote home show here in Minnesota, which we're really excited about as well. Richard, great to have seen you at the Boise show recently. Really appreciate that as well. We were stoked to be out there. I know Eric had an awesome time. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get out to that one next year. We were in Marlboro getting snowed out this year and uh, that weekend. Andy, great customer service with the app. We really appreciate that uh, and, uh, and great improvements for the Weekend Warrior. I hear you. It's uh, awesome to be able to just cruise around even on, on the weeknights while you're uh, dreaming about fishing in the morning and check out some new water. I always get yelled at by my girlfriend just scrolling around on our iPad while watching TV. And she's like, what are you doing? You're not even watching the show. I'm like, no, I'm checking out some water I might never fish, but looks really good. Awesome, James, nicely done. Hope to see you at the Expo in Minneapolis in March. We sure will be there. That is, uh, again, our quote unquote home show. So we should have the team out in full force for that one. And that'll be a really great weekend for us. So looking forward to seeing you there. Awesome. Andy, again, we really appreciate you coming. Really appreciate everybody for sticking around with us and uh, asking questions. Thank you so much for uh, continuing to support our uh, our masterclass series. We've had a really, really great time bringing you these classes and uh, we'll hopefully be announcing February's here pretty soon. So keep an eye open for that. And uh, other than that, Hope everybody has a great night and tight lines. Make sure to send those uh, emails if you've got any questions over to hello at troutroutes.com or if you've got any support questions to support at troutroutes.com. And uh, as always, check out the recorded version on YouTube. Should hopefully be uh, posted around mid-morning tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night.